Hi guys, welcome to Cryptids Canada. I hope everybody's having a great day. So, yes, I'm going to read chapter 24, but before I do, I've been getting a lot of emails asking me if this is my story. No, this is not my story. However, little bits and bobs are from my life. Uh, for instance, Kathy was the name of my best friend growing up. Um, Sarah, the tea lady, is my oldest daughter. The diner in town is called Jackal B. And Jackal B is actually the name that my youngest daughter used to call her invisible friend. She would talk to Jackal B all the time. She's going to kill me. <laughs> Anyways, um... Will Johansson's dog, Lola, was named after my Squatch dog, Lola, who has passed away. Um, Jenka's little dog, Baby, is named after my little white dog, Baby, that you guys all know about, seen pictures of. And I think that's just about it. There might be a few more things, little tidbits that I put in there. You guys all know Vic Cundiff from Dog Man Encounters Radio. Well, he is one of the main characters in my next book. Uh, yes, I, I spoke to Vic, and he has given me permission to use his name and likeness. So that'll be cool when I finally get to sit down and actually finish writing it. But I hope I answered your questions. If I think of any more interesting tidbits, I'll surely let you know. But before I start, there is... a. Uh, a little bit of adult content that is uh, could be upsetting to some. So I'll put a little warning clip in the video part. Uh, just keep an eye out for that. Um, I really don't want to offend or hurt anybody. So uh, just to let you guys know that, I have toned it down for the online reading of the book, but I'm going to leave it in the book, I believe. Uh, just so you're aware of that. Okay, on with chapter 24. When it was just the four of us sitting at the table, I reached over and I held my mom's hand. You two know that I love you with all my heart, I said. But Lisa and I both agree that it isn't safe for you to be here. If I hadn't been so preoccupied yesterday, I would have called and asked you not to come today. We aren't going anywhere, Pop started to say when the sliding glass door slid open with a loud thud as it slammed into the door jamb. Brad, said Kathy, breathing heavily, you'd better come, we have a problem. I jumped up and I looked around. What is it, I asked, starting to panic, thinking a Bigfoot was going to attack at any moment, if, indeed, we were actually dealing with the Bigfoot. No, it's not a Bigfoot. Scott needs you upstairs, she said, right away. Oh, okay, I answered. Why don't you guys go inside for now, I said, looking at Mom, Pops, and Lisa. I'm sure I won't be long. Everyone got up, and we followed Kathy back into the kitchen. Mom, Pops made a beeline for the guest room, using the excuse that they were in need of a little nap because they were up early and the drive was long. Damn that green tea, I thought. The days of my parents taking innocent naps were gone. They had now been replaced with horrible visions of ba va voom Once Kathy and I were out of earshot, I asked her what was going on. She started to explain as she moved quickly through the kitchen door to the new stairs. She and Scott had decided to sneak away and have some alone time. They were being quiet going up the stairs because they didn't want anyone to suspect what they were up to. When they opened the door to the apartment, they heard a noise coming from the new bedroom. They stepped back out onto the landing and closed the door quietly. Kathy said she waited while Scott ran down to grab his gun. We snuck back in, and you're not going to believe what we found, she said, opening the apartment door. Scott was standing there in the new living room with a gun in his hand, and seated on the couch was Riley. Oh, hey, I said, confused. What's going on? I caught Riley here, said Scott, pointing the gun towards Riley for emphasis. 
going through my closet. What? I asked, even though I heard what Scott said. I looked at Riley and asked if that was true. Yes, I was, but I, uh, he started to explain. Scott cut him off. He's going to tell you that he was looking for his wallet. But that's crap, isn't it, Riley? Scott asked. No, it's not crap, whined Riley. When I got home last night, I realized I must have dropped it while we were working. I came back to ask about it, but when I knocked on the front door, no one answered. So I decided to just look around. Well, I guess you forgot what you told us on Tuesday, said Scott. And just as he said that, I remembered what he was talking about. I interrupted and I finished for Scott. You told us you don't carry a wallet. When Scott handed you a piece of paper with all our cell numbers on it and told you to put it in your wallet, you said, I don't carry a wallet, which I honestly thought was strange, I said. So fess up, Riley. What are you doing going through Scott's things? I heard the apartment door open and turned to see Lisa coming in. What's going on, she asked. Scott found Riley going through his closet, I answered. And then I heard the door open again, and this time it was Kathy. I hadn't even noticed that she had slipped out. I found a ten-speed hidden in the bushes beside the road, she said. So I'm wondering why you hid your bike if you knocked on the front door like you said you did. Plus, maybe you don't realize, but... We have two giant guard dogs in the living room right now, and if you would have knocked, they would have alerted us. So you are lying, Riley. I guess some things just don't change. Kathy definitely caught all of our attentions with the last comment. I remembered then that she had said she knew a kid named Riley from high school. When she noticed all of us staring at her, she decided to explain. Riley was two years ahead of me in high school, and when you said his name the other night, I was hoping it wasn't the same kid, but I couldn't be so lucky. She looked lost for a moment, and then she quickly found herself. She looked right at Riley and asked, Do you not remember me? Riley looked down at his hands and shrugged. Kathy continued on, All of us kids from around here were all really close, even though there was maybe a couple of years' age difference, we all still hung out. I was 14 the year your family moved in here, and you started hanging around with us because you were on the same bus, she said to Riley. We were good to you. We invited you everywhere we went. Kathy was starting to get emotional, and I was starting to worry where this was going to go. I casually walked over to Scott, and I took the gun from his hand, which was down by his side. He, too, looked confused by what he was hearing. All of a sudden, Kathy screamed, I was 14 years old, you SOB. You brought alcohol to the pond that night after school ended, and you and Mark were starting to drink. And you, you attacked me in the bunkie. You took my innocence. You ruined my life, she said, screaming. You told everyone I came on to you and you ruined my reputation. You turned everyone against me, and I hate you for it. Scott dove over the table and grabbed Riley's shirt with one hand and pulled him to his feet. With the free hand, he landed a hard punch to Riley's eye. He looked stunned for a moment and then looked directly at Kathy and screamed, You witch! Riley really should have kept his mouth shut, because round two was about to get a lot worse. After that, all I could say was that Scott gave Riley a beating he wouldn't soon forget. After a bit, I will admit it was a long bit, I stepped in and I pulled Scott away. I whispered into Scott's ear for him to go and help Kathy, who was presently being hugged by Lisa. After I separated them, I twisted Riley's arm up behind his back and I pushed him through the door. I threw him out the door, and I heard him tumble down the stairs. I told Lisa to call Irene and find out where the water park was. We needed to go get our daughters back home now. I needed to know that he didn't touch one of my babies, I yelled. Lisa got a panicked look on her face, and Kathy cried, Oh my God, I never thought. I'll kill him if he touched one of those girls. 
Kathy added, sobbing into Scott's neck. The thought of Kathy, the thought that Kathy had kept quiet so long so we could get this work done, bothered me something fierce. She was a strong woman, and I loved that about her. Lisa got hold of Irene and explained that uh, there was a bit of a family matter and we needed to come get the girls. As Lisa said, Irene was a lovely woman and couldn't be held responsible for her son's actions, and neither could little Tina. Tina would be welcome in our house as long as Kathy wasn't bothered by it, but our girls would never again step foot into their home, ever. Irene will be here in about 45 minutes, Lisa said quietly. They were just packing up to leave when I called. Irene said the girls are pooped and have had enough sun to last the winter. Well, that's good. Maybe they'll get a good night's sleep, I whispered, while eyeing Scott and Kathy, talking quietly on the couch. I couldn't help but jump a little when Kathy jumped up and said, let's go see if we can figure out what that jerk was doing in the closet. We all followed her into the bedroom, making casual chit-chat and looking at one another as if to say, what the heck? In a way, I was thankful for the change because I didn't know what to say or do to make Kathy feel better. There were seven boxes that Lisa and Kathy had packed up over the last couple of days. Most of the stuff was junk from the previous owners. Three of the boxes got stacked in Scott's closet, and four were put down in the garage. But obviously, Riley was interested in the boxes that were in Scott's closet. So we got them out, one at a time. We didn't find anything of any value, so we packed them back up and carried them down to the garage. You know, besides the obvious, said Scott, I'm glad we don't have to see that jerk anymore. Tell me about it, I agreed. Hey, where is uh, Ma and Pops? Scott asked. In the guest bedroom, having a nap. I was thinking that I'm going to get them to stay up in Brianna's bedroom. That way, I know they'll be safe, I said. Ah, you just don't want to hear them making babies, he said, laughing hysterically. Oh, don't remind me, I said. We heard Irene's car drive up while we were in the garage moving some stuff around to make room for the three new boxes. It was like music to my ears to hear my little girls talking and laughing as they got out of the van. As I slid a box out of my way, Scott held up his hand and motioned for me to listen. He whispered that he thought he heard Irene say, Tell that witch, Kathy, I want to talk to her. Who did he say that to, I asked. I don't know, he said. Oh, no, something tells me that this isn't over, I said. We could hear the kids talking excitedly when they came into the kitchen door. I was so surprised to see Tina standing there with the girls as they talked to Lisa. I looked at Scott, who looked back and shrugged. Maybe I didn't hear her right, he said. When the girls saw us, they went ballistic. They were taking turns hugging Scott and me. Even Tina got in on the hugging, which made both Scott and I very uncomfortable. As we were making our way to the table, with the little girls still climbing all over us, Kathy walked in and sat down. Oh, yeah, Kathy, Irene wants to talk to you, and she called you a bad name, too, Brianna said with an embarrassed look on her face. Kathy looked surprised. What was the bad name, she asked Brianna. You could see that Bree didn't want to hurt Kathy's feelings. She was stammering and trying to work out the courage to say what it was when Tina interrupted, rolled her eyes at Brianna, and said, she called you a witch. What? Kathy shrieked, then looked at Brianna and said, Hun, are you sure she said that word? But before Brianna could answer, Tina jumped in front of Brianna and said, Oh, yeah. She said, You were a witch and a hose, to quote my 10 year old daughter. And then she screamed into the phone. She was calling you a bunch of other stuff, too. And for a brief second, it looked like Tina had to force herself not to laugh. Okay, I'm going out there to have a few words with Irene. You guys stay here, she said to our three girls. Then she looked at Tina and said, 
You can go out there if you want. Sounds like you're familiar with that wrong side of life. As Kathy turned to walk out the door, Brianna said, Yeah, Tina, I think you better go, like Kathy said. I thought I was spending the night, Tina whined. No, Tina, we told your mom after school starts because we have company this weekend, said Lisa. My mom said I was staying with you for the weekend because she kept your kids for all those days, Tina said with a nasty tone. No, I said, stepping forward. I'd be darned if I was going to let a snotty 11-year-old treat my wife like garbage. We told your mother after school starts. We have company this weekend. Where? Tina asked. Where what? I said. Where's your company? I don't see any company, Tina said as she swirled around doing a mock search under the table and down the hall. Okay, that's it. Come on. You're coming with me to talk to your mother with your bad behavior, said Kathy. I'm going with you, said Scott. Me too, said Lisa. Kathy looked at both of them and smiled as she mouthed the words, thank you. As they reached the door, there was a loud rapping, like Irene was using her keys to knock on the door. Kathy whipped the door open and stepped right up to Irene. I understand you have something to say to me. Yes, I do, said Irene. You started all this trouble for my son years ago, and now you're doing it again. What is your problem, Kathy? Were you afraid that Riley was going to let it slip to your new boyfriend? What a hose you no doubt still are? That's enough, said Scott. If you must know the truth, she probably would never have said anything if I hadn't caught your thieving son rifling through my closet. Tina had been standing beside her mother quietly until Scott called Riley a thief. That seemed to set her off because she started yelling, for Scott to go to hell, and then Irene said, Oh, and by the way, you can expect a bill in the mail for two days construction work and three days daycare. Well, you can go ahead and try your crap, Irene, said Scott, as he pulled his cell from his pocket and hit a couple of buttons, and a recording of Riley came on when he was insisting that he didn't want payment because he just wanted to feel closer to his deceased father. At hearing that, Kathy started to howl with laughter. Is that what he told you? She asked, looking at Scott. His father was a fall-down drunk who used to beat his wife, Irene, here, and the kids. I bet all along he was casing the place, she added. Lisa walked up to the door, separating Irene and Kathy, before Irene could retaliate. Look, she said, just take your kid and go home. This isn't getting any of us anywhere, Lisa said politely as she started to close the door. Tina stepped forward so the door couldn't close and cried to her mother that she wanted to spend the night and that her mother promised her. Then the strangest thing ever happened. Well, it's not up to me, is it? Irene said to Tina as she looked at Lisa, probably expecting Lisa to give in and say, okay, you can spend the night. But instead, Lisa laughed a good hearty laugh and then said, you're out of your mind. The look on Irene's face said it all. She was indeed out of her mind. She walked up and spit a huge, disgusting wad right into Lisa's face and then turned to walk away. Two seconds later, as Irene was pulling and struggling to get Tina to walk to their van, a big homemade pie hit her square in the back of the head. Irene turned around with shock and surprise on her face as Lisa smiled and shut the door. And that, my friends, is the end of chapter 24. Whew, that was another long one. Um... Well, long by my standards, because you know my videos aren't very long. But it's about to start picking up and get more and more exciting. I hope you guys are definitely going to stick around. Uh, I definitely am enjoying reading this to you guys. So, um, oh, I wanted to point out to you that um, I'm going easy on the swearing because YouTube has definitely... uh, 
snipped that part of it. So if I say something that they don't like, they literally will demonetize the whole video. So I'm trying to be a good girl. I don't make a heck of a lot on each video, but every little bit helps, right? So we just do the best that we can do. Okay, kids, I think that's going to be it for now. And I hope you all enjoy your evening. And we'll see you back here in a couple of days or tomorrow. You never know. Bye for now.